is uh, Wolfgang Sessler. I'm from uh, University of Oslo Signal Research Laboratory. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, our uh, soccer projects. Many of you have uh, maybe heard about this, and uh, if you were here yesterday and saw uh, uh, Bams' presentation in Oslo, you uh, see some of the things we can do. But uh, of course, we can only do so much. So we're trying to release some of these data updates to you, so you can also do some cool things. So. Uh, during this presentation, I'm going to first talk a little bit about our sports analysis system. We call it uh, Bagalus. It's a Sami name after the native people in the northern part of Norway. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the position tracking system and the video system. That's the main part of its data set. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of example use cases. Okay, so this is our big scenario. Um, the system is actually built up of three subsystems. You have the video system, uh, which is the system that records video of the entire uh, football field. You have a sensor system, that's the sensor that does positioning of the soccer players. And we have an uh, analytics system that's uh, for the coaches to make annotations during the game, uh, but also for other uh, users to make annotations during the end. So the parts we'll be releasing in the data set today are the data system and the sensor uh, system. So let's uh, have a look at those systems. The sensor system is actually made by a Norwegian company called ZXY Sports Tracking. Uh, it's actually sensor belts, you see them here, that are around the waist of the players. Uh, the players are tracked by 11 stationary radio uh, receivers that are around the stadium. You see on the picture uh, there. The sensors are operate on a standard uh, 2.45 meters uh, SM cap. That's the same as uh, Viva. Um, the accuracy of the sensors are stated by the manufacturer to around one meter. We actually have um, tested that with GPS and it's fairly accurate within one meter. Uh, the belts contain several sensors actually. You have an accelerometer there, a three-way accelerometer. Uh, you have a gyro. You have a heart rate sensor and a compass actually. And the data from these sensor belts are stored in a central database. Uh, so how does this position data, how is it laid out? This is the soccer field or a pitch in uh, Tromsø Stadium in Norway. Um, so uh, it's basically a 2D coordinate system uh, where you have the x-axis here and the y-axis there. And the position 00, zero is down here in the northwestern corner of the field. And uh, since the soccer pitch at the stadium is uh, 105 meter times 68 meters, that's uh, how far it goes. And there are some out of field values and it usually occurs uh, if you have a throw in uh, from the sideline or during warm up sessions when uh, uh, players often run outside the fish warming up before they <coughs> enter. So how actually does this data, how is it represented? Um, it's directly from the database, so it's CSV from a separated file, looks like this. Uh, it's, two, uh, it's in two samplings. You have the 20 hertz data uh, that contains a time stamp, uh, which is basically the time of day and the date. Tag ID is uh, the ID for the sensor. And then you have the X and Y position. That's the position itself. Uh, heading. It's uh, in radians. Um, it's the degree from the y-axis in radians. Energy is an estimation of energy consumption on uh, that player. Speed, is, uh, the speed measures in meter per second. And total distance is how many meters have this player traveled or run walked uh, during this match. So that's 20 hertz. Uh, and we also have the Volmers data, uh, which is tied to the same timestamp, same tag ID, 
Uh, here we have a total distance uh, as well. And you have what's called a uh, HIR distance, that's a total distance during a, uh, a high speed run. The high speed run is uh, up to 20 kilometers per hour, I think. So, how much, how long, for how long have a player uh, had that high intensity? And sprint is even higher, I think that's up to 25 uh, kilometers per hour. Uh, and total effort, that's a value on how much effort the player has uh, used during this game. So that's basically our sensor data. Uh, moving on to the video data. We actually have two camera setups in this data set. And this is the first setup. It's uh, comprised of three video single cam video streams with uh, this Bastler ACA 1300 cameras, so that's basically HD ready resolution, 720p ish, a little bit higher. Um, in these three streams. So those three streams cover the entire field. They use wide angle lenses, so bear that in mind. But there might be some fish eye effects in it at 30 frames per second. And in addition, we have uh, the new setup that uh, we showed on Oscar yesterday. In a little bit in the back of the stadium, it's this one that's uh, made up out of uh, five of these uh, 2K uh, cameras, the Buster ACA 2000 cameras, and we have already stitched them together into a panorama image. So the resolution of this image is uh, 4450 times 2000 at 25 frames per second. The second setup that we have in this data set. Uh, we actually moved this uh, uh, camera setup you saw here to the front position where these cameras here were located earlier um, to get this view. It's actually a picture of our camera setup there. Um, so the five of the Buster cameras stitched panorama like this. Uh, all the videos in this data set are encoded with the same codec. We use uh, H.264. The X264 that we used to code up. Uh, the properties are the same. Uh, the only thing that differs the resolution and the frames per second. So we use uh, high profile H264 um, ultra fast presets. And each camera uh, stream is um, split into uh, three second segments. So three times the FPS frames. Um, so the data sets we are providing to you. Um, with setting one, we have to complete uh, football matches. We have uh, from November last year, um, Tromsø versus Tromsø, that's in the Norwegian uh, Elite League. And we have uh, Tromsø versus uh, ANSI, which is in the European League. And uh, for the second setup, uh, we only have uh, parts of a match, 40 minutes. That's um, in the end of November last year, Tromsø versus Tottenham Hotspur, also the European League. Um, and a little note, the second data set here, uh, also, um, here we also have a data set where we have manually extracted the ball position. Um, the sensor system, we don't have a sensor in the ball uh, here. Um, but here in this set we have manually extracted positions. So, uh, a couple of example use cases that we have used this data set for. Uh, one of the example use cases is uh, computer vision algorithms and background subtraction. Um, background, background subtraction uh, is actually done in our, when we stitch our panorama, we do that. And we have tested several algorithms for doing that. And uh, the circuit which was the one we found uh, slow, but also the most precise. So what we actually did as an optimization to do it is that we took the, we know the position of the plate, right? So we can uh, narrow down our search. So we actually used the player's positions into the background subtraction. And actually you can see here that we get much less noise in the background when we do when we do that. Another thing. Uh, is 
to do uh, automatic generation of video summaries. We have a database with all with all this uh, data points, so we actually can do pretty advanced SQL queries to this database. This SQL query here uh, actually says that uh, give me all the video clips where any player is uh, I think three or four point within four point five meters of a certain player. And, uh, return something like that and you can play back the videos so the challenge here actually is to try to make these SQL queries understand understandable to a football coach who doesn't know anything about SQL uh, we actually have done some attempts on that and uh, you can see on the MMC's demo session tomorrow we're actually I'm going to show you some of the work we have done in uh, this field another example use case is of course sports analytics uh, here you can, uh, here there are several scenarios where you can use uh, both the sensor data and the video. Uh, say for instance that you want to see, like this one, you want to see the energy consumption of the entire team during the match. So here you have the soccer field, and in the y-axis you have the total percentage of energy used to actually see where your team has done most efforts. Hopefully that's, that's your bonus goal, you see there? <laughs> yeah. And you can do other queries here, you can, for instance here, get uh, heat maps of a certain player's movements. This is actually a uh, defensive player here, so it's doing his job, being defensive. Uh, and here actually, uh, you can, for instance, plot the average velocity between two players. Another interesting thing you can do is, for instance, you have the total amount of energy used by a player. If you know how much energy a player can use during a match, then uh, why not plan in advance? If you have seen that uh, this player has been the best during the match, but you know that he has used up all this energy and in five minutes he's going to have nothing more to give, then why not use that data to uh, plan and take him off and switch him out before his totally exhausted. So yeah, a lot of uh, cool use cases, a lot of cool things to do. Uh, so to try to conclude and uh, sum up, we have presented a multi-sensor data set here with both tracking data and video data. The data is collected for the home team. Uh, it's optional for uh, the visiting team to use the sensor belts, but in the matches we have here, it's only the uh, home team that uh, use the sensors. Uh, we have presented a couple of use cases here. Uh, we have two demos and a uh, demo session tomorrow. So come and uh, visit them and see um, how we use this data. A couple of disclaimers. Uh, we, have, um, we have randomized the player's identities in the uh, sensor during the tag ID um, for their privacy. And we're not... We're, uh, we're not allowing any attempts to try to re-identify uh, individual players and this data might be used freely for non-commercial research purposes. And with that, questions? Uh, I would like to have the URL to the data. Actually, I'm just calling now to have uh, the players running on a vehicle or the, the one you saw yesterday. I think the URL is in the paper. Is it the paper? Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, it's, it's in the paper. I think reference number one is the, in the paper. Is the URL. I don't know. <laughs> or if I Google that, uh, that it is, will you find it? Probably, yeah. Okay, all the data sets will be made available after a conference. Uh, the UMass repository uh, or the links to the data set. So there is a repository for the last uh, few data set uh, sessions and uh, those will be integrated in all of Yeah, but it would be great just to have a demo just now. Right? Yeah, I can, yeah. Um, yeah. You can also, I can also give you the URL during the conference. Okay, great. Okay, thanks again. Thank you.